On today's episode, we'll be talking about Sarah Blair, the 18-year-old who successfully managed to run for and win a seat in the West Virginia House of Delegates. We'll be discussing whether or not her age might be an issue and whether or not it might impede her ability to understand and serve the needs of her constituents. The panelists I have with me today to discuss this issue are Esteban Bustillos, Managing Editor of the UTD Mercury, Nancy Fairbanks, Student Government Vice President. We also have with me today James Pacifico, Station Manager of Radio UTD, and Rosalind Huff, a senior studying international political economy here at UT Dallas. Panelists, I'd like to thank you for joining me here today. And as you all know, we're all people in our late teens and early 20s, and we all face really difficult decisions, right? You know, we have to choose between a bowl and a burrito at Chipotle, between the six and the six S when we buy our phones, right? But I hope you'll agree with me when I say the decisions that you know our lawmakers and state representatives face and make every day are a little more complex, which is why there has been you know concern about Sarah Blair's age. They feel some people feel that because she is so young, she might not be able to understand the needs of some of her older constituents. So, Panos, the first question I'd like to ask you is: Do you think her age and being only 18 years old might be an issue for her serving in the West Virginia House of Delegates? I think absolutely. Um, I think it's just kind of an unavoidable issue that being as young as she is, barely out of high school, if she's even graduated high school, um, just means that she hasn't had enough life experience, as vague of, vague of a term as that is, to really speak to her constituents' needs. I mean, I think that while she's clearly going to be missing some aspects of life that adults know very well, such as doing complicated tax forms and knowing what it's like to have a real income and be a real taxpayer, I think that there are plenty of other political representatives that also have limited experience and experience doesn't necessarily always come with age. And so I think that she may have some different views and opinions that can really add to the rhetoric of the government rather than being limited by the experience she hasn't been able to have yet. All right. Yeah, and I mean, just the, the going on age alone, it may not actually define how mature um, she is, which I think is a big issue. Uh, you know, being 18, she may have, you know, the actual intellectual age of somebody much older, um, not even counting like her education, um, which I think plays a big factor in this. Do you I, think that, I'm sorry. I honestly don't think it's a problem her age, mm -hmm. quite frankly. Um, if you can win and really be there for your constituents and, and win a seat and whatever, division, whatever campaign, whatever it is, and you win and do it successfully, that means you're really out there wanting to work with your constituents and listen to them. It's really about listening to your constituents because you do have a lot of people in office that just really, they get in office and they not, may not necessarily listen to their constituents. Just because she's young, it does not mean it hinders her in any way. She may have, like Nancy, you were saying, other aspect that she may be strong in as an 18 year old, but there are other older, um, Congressmen, Congresswomen that may not understand the youthful aspects, and she can bring that out. Bring that out. You may have that issue of okay, there may be like 40, 50 year olds, and that one 18 year old, but there still needs some needs to be some diversity anywhere you go, and I don't see that as a problem with her. And I didn't think you bring up diversity, and you know the, how I guess the West House of Representatives, or in West Virginia's case, House of Delegates, made up of people of different ages. Do you think the fact that she's only 18, and you have people you know in their 40s and 50s serving? You think, you know, because she's so young, are other people going to take her seriously? Well, 40 or 50 year olds, they may, they may or may not take her seriously, but they do have to respect her and do have to respect her seat. And that's the problem that some, some congressmen and women have. They just say, okay, well, well, I don't have to listen to you. But she won that seat fairly, and you have to respect her. And it doesn't, you shouldn't hinder her, oh, because she's 18, she might not be able to do this successfully. I don't see. I don't personally see that as a problem. I think they all should work together and listen, so they can work eff effectively um, for their constituents. I think that one thing I'm concerned about is that older Congress people may feel like they can influence her or sort of use her because she's young and doesn't have as much experience. That basically she can, you know, speak on their behalf rather than making her own decisions for her own constituents. And I think it's going to take a lot of mental fortitude to deal with that sort of pressure in a high pressured environment in a situation that she's not really used to. That's a question people have on their minds whether or not she has the mental fortitude, which is something I guess we'll only figure out once she actually starts serving. Um, another issue that people have brought to light with her campaign is that her father is actually a state, is a senator in the state of West Virginia. 
people have been concerned that, oh, she only won this seat just because uh, you know, her father was already an established senator. Do you guys feel that might be true? Oh, man, nepotism in politics. What about that? <laughs> it's not the first case. Yeah, it's, I mean. Just making sure. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I, get, I mean, that's concerning, but it's, you know, it's pretty par for the course. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I wouldn't say it automatically, yeah. you know, completely just does away with any credibility that she may have, but I, I would say that it certainly helps her, having her, her last name out there. Whether or not, whatever, wherever you are, wherever you are, whatever your education is, and if you're still learning, if you're still willing to learn, it really doesn't have a factor um, in that. Even though her father may be a senator, um, at least she has someone to help guide her in what to do, what not to do. But so. in an elected official, do we want someone who's, who's learning and who you know, is accepting guidance or do you want someone who's already prepared, already has the college education and already has the necessary skills? I don't honestly think, I don't think every single congressman or woman is prepared. You may, for example, people want to uh, out the speaker. And at first I was like, oh, may all the, all, maybe all the Republicans want to support him. But it was like eight people that wanted to take his position. Mm -hmm. and they were like, oh, I'm going to be ready for the speaker, you know, the speaker position. But do you really think they are ready? you think they are prepared. So um, just because you may seem one is not prepared doesn't mean you're not prepared. You can, there's always a learning opportunity. You always see it as a learning opportunity. Plus I think that uh, education can be a separate issue from age. I know I'm from Springfield, Missouri, and my congressman, Billy Long, I don't think he ever went to college. Uh, and so he may have gotten life experience elsewhere. I think he was an auctioneer for a long period of time, but he brought a different experience to the table that didn't directly relate to education in the typical route. So I have a question for you guys then. Do you think, because Sarah Blair is so young, she might get people who, young people who aren't necessarily always involved in politics at the local or state level more interested in politics? Uh, Absolutely. I, I would say that that's actually a really big um, positive point to her being elected is that it's you know, one of the youngest voices out there now, if not the youngest, that's actually representing the people. And it's, it's our generation that, that she's a part of. Would you, guys, would you guys all want to see more younger candidates on your ballot? I guess, I guess more importantly, if we had more young people, let's say, running for you know, county elections or state elections, would you be more interested in voting? I would say younger, but not quite at her mm -hmm. age. Yeah. Because, I mean, let's face it, people our age generally aren't very involved in state or local elections yeah. whatsoever. I mean, we may get riled up at, or really excited when you know, the general election comes around, but, you know, we don't really know who's running for me, like county clerk position number three or whatever. And if we had more young people, people closer to our age, you know, running in those positions, do you think more people would be interested in voting? Yeah, I think not just young people, but people with younger ideas. I mean, I think any politician, regardless of their age, if they have ideas that really speak to our generation, uh, they're gonna get more people involved. But I do think if you have a candidate that young, 18 years old running, you're gonna have a lot of media controversy surrounding that. And so that in and of itself is going to get more people drawn into the election, especially people our age, because we're curious. We're like, oh, someone my age is running for this high office. You know, let's follow that story and see how that turns out. Maybe I can do that one day. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't think so, because in America, even in local elections, you don't have a lot of people participating in city council. You don't have people going to meetings. Even I don't have time to go to the, Mc, the McKinney or Frisco council meetings. My dad may sit on the board uh, for Collin County, but I have classes. <laughs> so, I mean, do we really have time to keep up with everything as the youth were going to college and things like that? So I, I'm just looking at it at that perspective, but if there are a lot more younger, like if it's in masses, younger like us, you know, running for these positions, I think we would, the young would um, pay more, like pay more attention and try to get involved more in what's going on locally. But as far as local elections, that's like in the low percentages. Yeah, yeah. because yeah, I kind of feel like apathy when it comes to elections is kind of, especially in young people, is uh, widespread no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if even if somebody who is around their age, again, not necessarily like 18, but who maybe they can relate to more. I think it, it would help, but um, a lot of young people just don't care. I do think that we can test this theory, though, because there is a girl at UT Dallas, Brooke Lopez, who's one of the senators in SG, who's running for a local seat. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly what seat she's running for, but she's 18 or 19, and so we'll see if UT Dallas students get really excited about that election and go out and vote for her. 
All right, so Brooke Lopez, everyone watch out for her. She might be on the next episode of Line of Fire. <laughs> we'll discuss how, what it's like, you know, potentially serving in office. But uh, panelists, this is all the time we have for this issue. I want to thank you guys for joining me. And I think we can all agree that Sarah Blair, you know, regardless of how she performs in the House of Delegates, she did something really amazing that a lot of young people, you know, may never do, may never even think about. And uh, we hope that she's capable of serving. Um, and uh, this is it for today's episode. Uh, this is Stanley Joseph for Line of Fire. If you want more information about Sarah Blair or more examples of students doing things you can never even dream of, tune into the UTD TV news or the UTD Mercury.